Hi, I'm Fozzie Ahmed. I'm a consultant cardiologist specialising in heart failure and devices uh, in Manchester. And I'm Colin Connington, and uh, ditto, I do exactly the same as Fozzie. So in patients who've failed to respond to uh, first-line medical therapies, so guideline-directed medical therapies, who have left bundle branch block and severe heart muscle dysfunction, then cardiac resynchronization therapy is a target for treatment. So certain patients with heart failure uh, have an additional electrical problem in their hearts, which is known as left bundle branch block. And that affects roughly uh, a third of heart failure patients who have heart failure due to weakness of the uh, left ventricle as a pump. And when you have left bundle branch block, it means that the two sides of the heart, the right side and the left side, don't contract at exactly the same time uh, because the electricity doesn't flow to both sides of the heart uh, evenly and usually the right side of the heart contracts momentarily before the left side of the heart and that lack of synchronization can uh, be very detrimental to overall heart function. Now a CRT device uh, which is also known as a biventricular pacemaker uh, is a, a pacemaker device implanted under the skin with electrical wires that go through the veins into the heart and we implant uh, a wire to the right side and a wire to the left side in order to stimulate both sides of the heart at the same time uh, and overcome that lack of synchronisation um, uh, to improve heart function. Yes, yeah, so the overall aim is to, to improve um, cardiac contractility and improve um, cardiac output, resulting in improvements to patient symptoms, uh, improvements to, to heart muscle function, quality of life and impact on the prognosis of the patient. So it's well recognised that 3 out of 10 patients in whom you implant a standard CRT system uh, may either fail to benefit from the device. Um, in some patients it's uh, not possible to add the, the extra lead in contact with the left hand side of the heart as Colin's already explained. And over time there can also be lead failure which results in, in the failure to deliver this re-synchronisation therapy to the heart. I'd add to that, Fozzie, so one, one of the problems with implanting leads to the left side of the heart, which is one of the most technically challenging aspects of uh, implanting pacemakers, is that unlike the right-sided leads which go within the chambers of the heart, the left-sided lead has to go in a vein that's on the outside surface of the heart. And you don't know when you start the procedure exactly how many veins you're going to find and how suitable they're going to be for putting a lead in because the anatomy from one person to the next varies considerably. Uh, and in some people there can be no suitable veins for putting a left ventricular lead. The other issue we have is because, because the veins are on the outside of the heart, sometimes they can be very close to an important nerve called the phrenic nerve, which is the nerve which controls the diaphragm, which is the breathing muscle. So sometimes Although the, the, the pacemaker lead on the left side of the heart can adequately stimulate the left side of the heart, it also stimulates that nerve and that causes a phenomenon known as phrenic nerve stimulation or what people tend to refer as twitch, which is when the pacemaker stimulates the, the breathing muscle so you get this irritating uh, twitching of the diaphragm. Uh, which is not, not harmful or dangerous but obviously it's extremely uh, irritating and it means that, that that pacemaker lead is not in a good position and has to be altered. So we're involved uh, in a trial called Sol CRT, which is uh, testing a new type of CRT device. Um, and the device, the, the name for the device is called WISE CRT uh, and the Y is part of it stands for wireless sensor for endocardial LV pacing. Now what that means is instead of implanting a normal pacemaker lead to one of the veins on the outside of the heart, with this new system we have uh, a small uh, electrode which is roughly the size of a large grain of rice uh, and that gets implanted within the left the cavity of the left ventricle, so inside the left side of the heart, uh, usually by going through the arteries which feed to the left side of the heart. And this can be linked up with an existing pacemaker or defibrillator using a transmitter device which is implanted between the ribs at the front of the chest uh, and which is powered by a battery uh, which goes uh, sort of under the armpit. So 
um, the device can sense the um, pacing uh, that's coming from the standard pacemaker and it sends a beam of ultrasound energy to this little electrode which is inside the left side of the heart and that in turn will stimulate the left side of the heart and we can achieve cardiac resynchronization through that means. So the main difference between conventional leaded CRT devices and WISE is the fact that WISE is leadless. Thinking about the potential benefits of this new wireless approach, are, there are two things. So firstly, with a standard CRT pacemaker, as I've said before, we're limited by whatever veins there are to implant a standard lead. But with the wire system, because the electrode is going on the inside surface of the heart, there is essentially a limitless choice of places within the left ventricle that you can place that electrode. And for people who've, who've had a standard CRT pacemaker and who haven't responded well, that may be because the existing lead position is not stimulating exactly the right part of the heart. So there's more choice of where you can put it with the Y system to try and achieve a better clinical response. The other main advantage is because it's on the inside of the heart, it cannot cause the uh, diaphragmatic nerve stimulation or twitch that you get with a standard CRT pacemaker, and which for some patients means that their standard CRT pacemaker is, is, is not useful, not effective. We are interested in Manchester in seeing patients who are going to be potentially eligible for this trial. Uh, so those patients fall into one of two categories. So the first is uh, patients who have a standard CRT pacemaker or defibrillator, but who haven't responded well to that treatment. And what I mean by that is patients who've had the device for at least six months, uh, in whom the symptoms, their symptoms of uh, heart failure are unchanged or worsened, and whose uh, echocardiogram, so heart scan, also hasn't improved. So we would term those uh, patients to be non-responders to standard CRT. The other group of patients are patients in whom there have been technical reasons why we couldn't implant a standard CRT device. So that would be people who've uh, got uh, very poor uh, target veins in the left ventricle, patients who've had persistent uh, uh, diaphragmatic twitch despite all the ways we can do to try and circumvent that. Uh, patients perhaps who've got uh, blocked veins that lead to the heart, meaning we can't add more leads. So those patients are patients who are eligible for CRT, but for whom, for whatever technical reason, haven't been able to have a standard CRT device implanted. So if you take part in a trial, um, it's, a, it's a, what's called a randomised controlled trial. Um, Randomisation is a way to try and uh, remove bias uh, when we interpret the results of a trial. So uh, for people who are eligible, uh, who agree to take part, everyone receives the YCRT system, but every patient will be randomly allocated to have the device either switched on or switched off for the first six months of the trial. And the trial is blinded, meaning that both the patient and the, the uh, doctors who will be analysing the data won't know whether that particular patient was switched on or switched off for the first six months. Now, after the first six months, everyone will have their device switched on. So even though uh, patients may not be receiving the benefit of the system in the first six months, they will, everyone will eventually receive the benefit of the system. And the reason we do this is so we can scientifically tell whether there's a genuine effect of this new CRT system or not. So one of the things that I think we do well um, as device and heart failure consultants is identify patients who may benefit from CRT therapy. What is done perhaps less well um, is a standardised approach to assessing response to conventional CRT therapy, identifying patients who at six months and beyond uh, are either not responding as they should or who remain significantly symptomatic. So patients who are less than optimally managed despite um, optimal medical therapy and conventional CRT should really be assessed um, and referred for consideration of the YCRT device as part of the Solve CRT study. Only recently in Manchester we started formally uh, reassessing patients after a CRT implant. Um, that's been done um, 
in different ways in different clinics up and down the country. Uh, and I think perhaps one of the um, goals for the, the heart failure and device implanting community is to standardise the way we uh, assess patients after having had a CRT. Uh, and if they haven't responded well, then now we know that there are potentially more options available than there have been in the past. So really exciting times for us as uh, heart failure and device implanting clinicians to have a therapy that can now potentially help a, a, a broader range of patients than we were able to um, offer help to before. So I think this trial is important for, for a number of reasons, but from a patient perspective, I think it's important to be able to identify um, a therapy that will work in a population in whom um, have been suboxonally managed in the past, so non-responders or patients in whom we've failed to be able to implant that left heart lead. Um, there is now a, a potential solution to that unmet need. No, I think this is really exciting technology and it opens up the possibility of CRT for a number of patients who, for whatever reason, uh, haven't been able to have a standard CRT pacemaker or haven't responded well for, for various possible technical reasons. We know that CRT is an extraordinarily important treatment for certain patients with heart failure and left bundle branch block and we know that the trials uh, show that uh, outcomes uh, and symptoms are improved by CRT. So I think it's important because we've got now got a new way uh, to give this important treatment to patients who otherwise couldn't have it before. But it's important that we're assessing it properly in a trial um, so that we know that it's safe uh, and it's effective because um, it is yet another invasive uh, treatment and often these patients have had already a lot of invasive treatments so it's only right that it's tested properly.